tried, but I just can't keep up with the media slant. I watch the spastic dance. They're doing the media slant. They must be members of some dark fraternal club. They hold their meetings while I'm soaking in the tub. Rousseau and Stalin must be cheering in their graves. I hear the rhetoric in everything they say. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, Andrew Richter, chasing the sun until we catch it. Not letting the evil get one more step ahead of us. We're cutting it off. That's it. How you doing? (laughs) Oh, you know... As always, I'm a little hot under the girdle. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I'm doing fine. <laughs> That's all right. Jay, uh, yeah. I have no idea who sings that. Yeah, you wouldn't. Galactic Cowboys. Well, that was maybe my second guess. Yeah, okay. Media Slant is the name of that one. Media Slant. Yeah. Okay. So what station does that play on? Uh, that one, I don't know if that ever did play on a station. But uh, they're more of a, I don't know, they're kind of metal, but they were kind of Beatlesque too, because they had these vocal harmonies that were like just amazing, and so oh. they were kind of compared to like a cross between the Beatles and Metallica in their day. So, Beatletallica? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although there, and that reminds me, there was a group. Was it called Beatallica? I think it was Beatallica, oh. where they did Beatles songs in the style of Metallica. Oh, it was genius. I want to hold your hand. Yeah, it was so funny. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up at, at some point. I haven't seen That'd that. That'd be better than the Crash time. Test Dummies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it was. <laughs> well, Jay, let me just say this. Yes. little hot under the girdle today. I got an okay. interesting voting. I voted today, by the yes. way. Yes. That's good. A few days beforehand. I've got a 15-hour work day on mm-hmm. election day. Didn't realize that till very recently, and I thought, Egh. so I actually left work early. Yes. Plymouth is a big city. And when there's 20 or 30 people at City Hall voting, it seems like there's a thousand, you know. Yeah. So it it can be I got there just in time though. Really? When I walked out, the line was outside and going down the sidewalk of the parking lot. But I got in pretty quick. There's maybe a dozen people in front of me when I got there about two o'clock today. Okay. Okay. But first, before I get into my story and you know, some people might be mad at me with what I did today. Um, I'll you? Explain. Yeah. Oh. All I do is cause... Tr- I've never been... First off, I, I, I don't even want to go to that. I want to back up to something. We got a new Supreme Court justice on Monday Yes, night. we do. Jay, some on the right are see this as a cause for celebration, and it may be. I think Amy Barrett's a sharp person. Mm-hmm. I think she'll spend the next three decades on the court. Yes. Um, and the three youngest people on the court, by far, are the ones appointed by President Trump. And the oldest yes. person, by far, 11 years, I believe, yes. is Stephen Breyer, of yes, course. Yes, he is 82 or 83. Yeah. I think Clarence Thomas is 71 or 2. And right. He's the next oldest. Um, but, Jay, can, can, it, it highlights something for me that... I mean, if I could sit down and interview Mitch McConnell, mm-hmm. I would ask him, and this is the only question that if he, if he can, and the Senate Majority Leader, of course, is always welcome on the program if he yes. wants to fly in here and come and sit down. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Ruth Ginsburg died on September 18th. Mm-hmm. Amy Barrett was confirmed on October 26th. Yes. Okay. 38 days Mm -hmm. it took to get a nominee, go through the Senate circus, Mm -hmm. and get a confirmation. Can I ask a question? If McConnell can pull that off, okay, and you have to give him some credit for it. He did do it. However, he did did it. Yeah. You know, the holdouts, all of a sudden, Mm -hmm. I like how he thought when push came to shove, they wouldn't do it. Right. Well, except for... Susan Collins. Oh, did she vote no? Okay, yeah. I didn't. I didn't yeah. catch that. I just caught. Uh, yeah, it was fifty-two forty-eight. What's her name from Alaska and a few others yeah. that were Rakowski. Yeah, yeah, and there were a couple others that were. Uh, Romney didn't uh, try any stunts. So. Yeah, he was. I don't know if he used his nap time or what. I don't know why he didn't. But anyway, um, if they can do that, yes. How in the world for two years did they not could they not her? replace and repeal Obamacare? 
There's no political will to do it. That's how why. could how could they not have pushed? Imagine the president running for re-election. Yes. If those first two years had all the things that he wanted to do and was sitting at his desk waiting to sign, mm-hmm. would have happened. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, promises were made. And I'm going to exclude President Trump for this because he wasn't there in 2010, 12, 14 when mm-hmm. Republicans were running in the House and Senate. Look, you give us the House and Senate, we'll do this and we'll do this, we'll do this. Yeah. You elect Trump and we'll, we'll bring this to his, and they didn't, do, they didn't do any of it. No. Okay, so how can they blow through a Supreme Court? In 38, I mean, the Democrats completely, we saw how powerless they are. Yes. They couldn't have stopped anything that the Republicans wanted to do. No. Nope. When, when the Republicans had the House and the Senate, and the, the Democrats couldn't stop anything. Mm-hmm. How is it then that all of the president's agenda did not get... Where was McConnell going, listen, yeah, we fought for six years mm-hmm. to get these majorities in the president, and you're not going AWOL on us. Yes. You know, blah, blah, because I know that he probably did that with these court nominees. Probably. I'm sure there was behind the scenes. Be a, look, come on. You know politics. is. McConnell's oh, yeah. been there since the 80s. He plays those games as Absolutely. well as anybody. Pelosi does it. Yeah. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese does it. Yeah. I mean, come on. We all know that, that these people who wander off the reservation, for whatever reason, there are mm-hmm. consequences. So I don't get... A, how there wasn't a plan sitting there. The, the Obamacare one in particular, how that was not on day one right. articulated, pushed, uh, everybody speaking with one voice. How did that not happen? Is it as simple as the political will's not there? I mean, yeah, oh, I think that's part of it. Um, you know, and, and you don't know what's happening behind the scenes. You don't know what kind of money is coming from what organization to who. Uh, you know, who's accepting what. It, it, but these guys have six-year terms, okay? we yeah. got short memories. Exactly. I That's mean, part of the problem. Yeah. But anybody, any vote made in 2017 has been long forgotten after yeah. COVID and riots and mm-hmm. a recession. Nobody cares anymore. Right. Have they changed things? I mean, we wouldn't even be talking about it. But you're right. And, and you know, you mentioned Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, you know, the way he has been threatening, uh, you know, when we get the majority back, you, you, we will not forget this. And he has already laid out some of the stuff they want to do. They'll they're, do it. They're empty threats, though. They'll do it. If they get the, if they get the majority, they'll do it. Well, I they'll mean. They'll take away the, the filibuster. Filibuster's dead as it is. Yeah. They, they're the, Harry Reid's the one who took it away in 2013. Yeah. What's he talking about? I mean, Chuck Schumer, I know, he, you know, it's, it's, he's only got three or four marbles left in the old noggin. But, I mean, right. come on. The filibuster was gone a long time ago. It's well, BS. What? Look, look. Yeah, l- 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 I, here's the thing. Are you telling me? Are you? It, 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 could Chuck Schumer sit here with that stupid smirk and that monkey spot on his head and sit here and tell me that if the Democrats didn't have the majority in 2016, Merrick Garland wouldn't be on the Supreme Court? Oh, absolutely. Of course okay. they would. Yeah. Give me that crap. No. Nobody's buying But that's not garbage. what I'm saying. I'm saying, you know, the Democrats, when, when they set out to do something, if they have the majorities, it gets done. They don't have this same wishy-washy, you know, mentality that the Republicans have where they can't come to a, a decision on things. They can't, they can't pass something when they have all of it. De- you know, they, Dems uh, are ruthless. Yeah. They're ruthless to each other. Yeah. I mean, they're like uh, they're like watching Animal Farm. I mean, they they mm-hmm. they will devour each other. Uh, you know, it, wh- why do you think moderate Democrats don't exist anymore? Yeah, I mean, look, they did it to Joe Lieberman. They, you know, and you mm-hmm. can right on down the line of other people like that that they just they just eat their own. So I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me. Look, I think Chuck Schumer's threats are. I laugh at them. Yeah, he doesn't I mean, scare me. No, but if they have the majorities, 
that's when it begins to get scary because they will they will pass stuff. Okay, but are, are we at it, the problem? Is Republicans never repeal anything? Uh, that is the problem. I mean, yes. w- w- why don't we just repeal? Well, when what you they have the do, majority, I mean, what? But they will make it so that I don't think that it, it's going to be really hard for a Republican to get elected to anything uh, if they're able to have their way and make DC a state and, uh, and that, make that requires Puerto Rico a that state. requires yeah. so much more than they're making it sound like it does but i think that they can probably pull the levers enough and if they they're How doing dc be a state it shouldn't be it shouldn't ever be a state i mean that's ridiculous you don't put your national capital in a state I, just make it part of maryland i don't care i mean it's just, i don't understand that i mean it, look, that's what that's what the Republicans should do is make it part of Maryland to just make them upset. Sure, they won't do it. Well, no. I mean, look, the bottom line is the Senate's. There's more red states and blue states. That's just a reality. And yeah, I think it's it's going to be tough for the Dems to hold that for any length of time, unless they no. gain the rules. So, I mean, you know, the, I think the court packing is something that worries me. Yeah. I don't think that'll go through. I think that that's too. I think it's too brazen even for them. I think ultimately, though, um, the appellate... One thing that McConnell has done a good job of is fill the... And and President Trump, too. Yes. Filling the appellate courts uh, with people. Yes. I mean, they... they, Absolutely. I think it's something like 250 judges. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Obama left, what, 100-some unfilled? He left a lot unfilled. And uh, they've been filled left and right. It doesn't get much coverage because it's kind of boring. (laughs) But a lot of those appeals courts... Amy Barrett came from the, uh, what, the 7th District, I think. Um, And that's... uh, I think President Trump, I think, has actually appointed like a majority of that appeals Probably. court. I mean, except for the Ninth Circuit, for some yeah. reason. Well, but. that there's no vacancies. There's got to be a right. vacancy. So He's it's... appointed a few in there, and I know that they, they've gotten a ha- handful yeah, of it's good justices in there. Or better than it was. There, but yeah. but. So, anyway. Um, so, okay. So, I'm just... It's a frust- it, it, it. <laughs> I watch conservatives celebrate, and I sit there and go... <laughs> You know, it just it just shows how when they wanted to get something done, they could. Yeah. And it bothers me that there's so many issues that they've failed to do that at. Yeah. It just reaffirms reaffirms my independence. <laughs> um, Jay, I voted today. Yeah. And I got to tell you something. It was an interesting experience because I did a few things. I've been voting since 1996, okay, mm-hmm. and I was 19, and uh, I remember it vividly. I was at North Hennepin Community College. I met my mom for lunch. Mm-hmm. I had never voted before, so I, I went there with her, and I did something today. I did a lot of things today that I, I have never done. I'm not, I, I wish I could say I'm proud of it, but quite frankly, it's a reflection of just my, I don't know, disdain for this election cycle. Yeah. I left so many things blank and wrote in so many naughty uh, uh, naughty uh, write-ins. Yeah. And like I told you today how tempted I was to vote for Renee. Oh, my word. If you would have done that, I would have taken you down on the air. I just feel like the I district just, sort yeah. of deserves her. No. <laughs> I couldn't do that to you. I know you got a kid in the district. I couldn't yeah. do that to, to you, kid. I appreciate that. Uh, in the end, I wrote in, I don't know what I wrote in, uh, Seymour Butts or something like that. I wrote in three, uh, three uh, Ben Dover or something like that I wrote in. Um, I, I will, I mean, I voted yeah. for the president. Mm-hmm. I did vote for Jason Lewis. Yeah, I like Kendall Qualls a lot. Yeah, and I, I was pretty happy to vote for him. Uh, Marge Beard, a friend of the show, mm-hmm. uh, for, for uh, the, the Park District. And I'll tell you, beyond that, now here's here's this election cycle summed up. Mm-hmm. Supreme Court. Okay, my choices are. Paul Thiessen, the the political hack, the yeah. former Speaker of the House, right. or Michelle McDonald, a convicted felon. Yeah. Does that not sum up why we need more choices on the ballot? Yes. 
And I don't know what I wrote in on that one. I wrote in a Jack Handy. I don't know what I wrote in. It's something else. <laughs> a few other things I wrote in I probably can't say on the air. Oh, boy. So it was, yeah, I, I, I would like to see a picture of whoever reads my <laughs> reads my ballad. By the way, yes. I've been, um, I have a story about an old lady in front of me. Uh, I felt bad for her, yeah. um, even though she smelled like mothballs. <laughs> I... I want to say something here. My word, yeah. I, how many people are in Plymouth? Do you know? Uh, 60,000, maybe? Uh, is it that big? Is it more like 48? Okay, I have to, I have to look. Yeah, I'll Google that, that boy up. I, I should have done my homework. I thought it was around, I thought it was about twice the size of like Crystal New Hope. No, I don't think you're right. 79,000. What? It's that yeah. big? Mm-hmm. I didn't think it was bigger than Maple Grove, but I guess it is. I was the 10,242nd vote. Yeah. When I slid my thing through. Wow. Now, there's only two more days of early voting, Friday right. and Monday, so there's not much time left. Yeah. So if there's almost 80,000, what do you, how many think are over 18? 50, 60, something like that? Yeah. That's okay, so guess. we're at about one sixth, which really is not. It's estimated 22% voted early in 2016. Mm-hmm. So we're actually not way, way, at least not in Plymouth, the way... No, I would imagine in Minneapolis the numbers are a lot higher. Maybe. I mean, I don't know how many people sit at Minneapolis City Hall all day and wait to vote. Yeah. When I went there, um, I got there at the right time because when I left, the line was outside and down the sidewalk. Oh, boy. Yeah, so um, I got there 15 minutes later, and I'd have been cussing and everything else. So I get in there. This is a disturbing experience, Jay. <laughs> yes. You hear a lot about mail-in voting, absentee voting. This is just, look, this is one, I didn't, I didn't ask for this. Okay. This stuff just finds me. Right. So I'm in line to vote. There's some little old lady, in front, Lady Hagler, in front of me. And she was telling the person that she came in to vote. She had requested a, a, a ballot a month ago. Okay. And they actually had that when you walked up to the computer, they actually had the date that she requested the ballot, and she never received it. Huh. Because I never got it. So I just decided to come in. I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. So, okay, well, here, we'll give you another one. And her mail-in supposedly is now invalid, quote-unquote. Mm-hmm. Right. But why do I not trust that? Well... I mean, okay, this is a person who requested a ballot, which yeah. has happened since... I mean, people in the military request a ballot, people, yeah. business people, seniors, nursing homes. Voting early is not as abnormal as we make it sound. Um, some states, it's different than others. Yeah. Florida is a state that's very, very different, but they have an orderly process, and they have for a long time. Mm-hmm. This person requests a ballot, doesn't get one. Okay, yeah. Do we see a problem? With universal bail-in voting or universal, <laughs> do we see a problem with that? Yeah. And the idea you can't get off your dead ass once every two years and go vote, you know, and I'm not yeah. saying that about a lady who's 80 right. years old. Right. I'm saying that about the rest of us. Because she did. She, she got up. And yes, voted. and she yes. went and voted because she didn't get her damn thing in the mail. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> do we not see a problem here with bail-in voting or with what happened to it? Well, I mean... But what did what did the the dog eat it? What did what did maybe the, she sold it to somebody in Cedar <laughs> Riverside for two hundred dollars? Well, we're not Chicago here. I mean, oh yeah, you, you saw those tapes, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. yes. But but uh, Omar, oh. yeah. But what what an experience yes. to to come there and have uh, to be in front of somebody and and hear. Yeah, I, I requested a ballot, never got one. Hmm. I, I I did not hear the date. You know, I'm hard of hearing, and everybody yeah. had a mask on, and the, the screen, you know, like at the gas station, the little plexiglass. Right. By the way, if I had a DeLorean, mm-hmm. I'd go back to January or February, and I'd buy stock <laughs> in a plexiglass company or something <laughs> like that. If I, but yeah. my 401k is doing well anyway because I'm a smart investor. Well, that's good. But uh, you see, the price of silver is. Mm-hmm. is and keep print. I got silver at home, Fed. Keep printing money. Yeah. Just makes that more valuable. Silver's up like 20% this year. Yeah. It's so, really gone up. I mean, it's, silver and gold both. And they're, and they're yeah. going to continue to go up. Oh, absolutely. 
Because paper money is getting more worthless. I think I think if Donald Trump wins election, that it's going to maintain enough of its value over the next four years. But next time we have a Democrat in office, I mean, you can kiss bye bye to our well, paper money. Well, but you know, you've got Congress ultimately, and then you've got. You've got monetary yeah. policy not in the hands of government. Right, so that's I don't, in the hands of the Fed. So whoever is yeah. in office, yeah. the, the Fed can set rates no matter who's there. Right. I think it's less about the rates, though. I'm, uh, and it w- I, oh, know, right. I, I, I mean, promise that we'd but look into this. But they're important will, but, because of borrowing. Right. If it's easy to borrow, right. you know. But you've got a group of billionaires, you know, that get together at Davos every year, and and they're talking about the Great Reset. Where's the Bilderbergs meeting next year? No, this is out in the open. This is on their website. You can you can go out to the World Economic Forum website and and read all about the Great Reset. And I hate them. I do too. And I hate them all. The, the whole goal. I mean, they're bringing everything together. Uh, and we'll have to do a whole show on it because it, it will affect us locally. They want to get rid of the dollar as the standard for the for the world currencies, and they they want to go to something that's more digital. They want to change policies that uh, help things out with climate change, equity, uh, making things better. For transgender, why don't they just run the? They, are they running the 281 school district? They might be. That's <laughs> where it might be where they're getting their cues from. How do you control a digital dollar? I don't know. I mean, a paper dollar is bad enough. Yes. Um, well, again, I mean, to me, until we're backed by, I mean, I hate to sound like Andrew Jackson here, but if, if we're if we're if this we're, is the one place where he was really good. If we're not yeah. backed by real. Currency, i.e., silver, gold, real. You know, we've been off the gold standard for a long time since the Great Depression. Yeah, and ever since then, it's been printing money, deficit spending, owing money in the future, mm-hmm. don't have it, and we're, our currency is is weak because it's not backed by. You know, I mean, look, I know this is boring banking stuff, but. Hard. There's the old paper money versus hard money, and I've always been a hard money guy. Yeah. Uh, that you know, uh, manipulating the country through monetary policy is very, very dangerous. And Absolutely. Especially when there's no accountability for it. And no matter what happens, the bankers still make money. Mm-hmm. You know, cheap money gets us indebted to the banks. Uh, you know, and and so. Uh, at some point, we're going to have to control monetary policy. I mean, at some point, the Fed's yeah. got to go, and monetary policy needs to be the way it used to be, which is decided by, I shouldn't say Congress, with Pelosi there. But ultimately, yeah. I mean, um, you know, where are we heading with, with banking policy here? Well, <laughs> I believe we're headed for hyperinflation at some point because you can't keep bringing the the rate of an, uh, interest down like this. Well, not at you a know, time I, where you have flooded the market with. At some point, that has to catch up. Yeah, you know, at some point, um, the you know, at some point, the the the, the um. Like you said, the the intra either we're going to have higher interest rates, which I think we're going to have regardless, mm-hmm. or you're going to have mass inflation. I mean, one right. of the two is going, to, or a combination of both, which would be even <laughs> even worse, really, because yeah. you're going to the dollar is going to be worth less, yet you're not going to be able to get as many dollars. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we're we're just I look, I, it's going to be ugly. I yeah. think I think it can be mitigated. Yeah. But I think it's I think that's what I think is going to delay us getting out of this this it, look. Get your storable food now, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the coronavirus. Yeah. I think it's I honestly think it's the the amount of printing money that we're, you know, and with no end in sight. I mean, yeah. You know, how can we run another stimulus bill? How's that possible? First off, the government can't I, stimulate. I mean, can, can we just no. say that straight out? Mm-hmm. What, what are they st- sending everybody welfare checks? That's not a stimulus. No, it's not. It keeps people afloat. It doesn't get it things It encourages going. them not yeah. to achieve and work. Oh, I'll get something for free. I'll get extra unemployment. Yeah. You're encouraging, you're, you're creating the opposite behavior that oh, you want to see. 
Okay, the hell with that. Look, it was a rough day. I apologize to the people who have to read my write-ins. Uh, <laughs> what was the other one? Jack O'Lantern. <laughs> um, I'll say another one. Really? I'll, uh, this is kind of a naughty one. You know the old football player Dick Butkus? Yes. I wrote Dick, all in caps, uh. but kiss. B U T T K I S S. That was one of the ones I wrote. He's going to be on the school board. Okay. Dick Butkiss. So I won't say the other couple ones. Oh, boy. Pretty bad. Okay. Well, so much for that. Uh, I had the pl- just the utter pleasure of, of voting. To see, Jay, I got my stickers. You do? So, yes. Yeah, so it is authentic. Wearing that loud and proud. Loud and proud, no question. So, uh, you know, uh, by the way, um, we did an episode with Bob Davis about two years ago. Mm-hmm. Our hundredth episode, if if I if yes. I remember right. Yes. And we kind of hit on the future of media, mm-hmm. and where we think it's going, and and all that. Well, a lot's changed in two. I mean, that was almost two Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Believe it or not, that was think almost about two years that. Ago. I mean, how much has changed in that short amount of time? I just think of my lifetime, and I I. What a what a what a you know, Jay. In in some ways, what a life we've gotten to live already. Yeah, I mean, I'm 43 years old. And I've seen more changes than any generation prior to me ever saw. I mean, if you were born yeah. in 1910 and you died in 1990, I mean, you saw a whole host of change from mm-hmm. from cars to planes to um, computers coming in at the end, TV, mm-hmm. radio. I mean, there are a lot of changes. Yes. I was born in 1977, and I've seen more changes than that. Yeah, and you ain't seen, seen nothing yet. I, I, I wonder what can be done now. Yeah. I mean, I really think about it. You know, what, and, and of course, it all affects politics. It all affects, and of course, local politics, which we like to talk about here, mm-hmm. is always left behind and afterthought, never thought of. People are way behind the eight ball. Yes. Uh, but... Just in my lifetime, okay, growing up, in, 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 I'll say back in the early to mid-80s when we had six TV channels, mm-hmm. maybe five. I think Fox was on, like, CB radio at the time. I don't uh, we, we didn't get that up in Duluth. Yeah. You uh, didn't even have a Fox affiliate then? No. I, think, I want to say that we had uh, whatever the channel is with Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street. Uh, at PBS? PBS. Yes. That's like, why can't I think of that? Yeah. CBS, ABS, and NBS. <laughs> channel 9, which we didn't was... have that. Okay, but that was the local channel here. Yeah. That became Fox later. Right. Okay, and then I don't know if we had... Maybe we didn't have another one. Maybe that was all. That's all we had. CBS, NBC, Two, four, ABC, five, nine, and 11. PBS. We had four. Okay. Up in Duluth. Yeah. Channel thirteen, channel ten, WDIO Duluth. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. I had we got that channel in Grand Rapids at yep. my cabin. Three was CBS, six <clears throat> was NBC. Okay. Yeah, ten was ABC and eight was PBS. And and here's my here's yes. my memory is the nineteen eighty seven World Series. Mm-hmm. Games one and two we were up at my cabin for up in Grand Rapids. Okay. okay. My grandma and grandpa had just retired. They just moved up there. And channel thirteen. Is what mm-hmm. we got in a game out of Duluth. Yeah. That was what the World Series was on. To get that channel, my grandfather had a dial that you'd turn. Really? And it like <laughs> turned his antenna. And I spent like the entire game in the corner, like moving what, something. Coat to, hangers with yeah, tinfoil Something on like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my dad is like, no, 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 hold it right there. Hold it yeah, right there. Yeah. You know, and so that, I mean, that. That was where we were in 1987. Mm-hmm. Okay, now at my house, we got cable in 1989. I remember it vividly because we got SummerSlam that year. Yeah. And I wanted, I wanted wrestling and the Midwest Sports Channel. My mom wanted her Lifetime movies. Yeah. My dad wanted ESPN. That was back when cable was 18 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. And it was like 30 channels maybe. Yeah, um, I remember... Uh, Maybe a little more than that. Yeah, I remember cable was around for a while, and um, I lived on a dirt road uh, growing up. 
you know, kind of on the edge of town. And uh, one year, all of a sudden, for I think it was for Christmas, we were going to get cable TV. I was like, yes. What year is this? I don't remember. It was... Uh, if I had to guess, I would say it would be around like 1988 or 9, okay. 87, I don't know, somewhere in there. And uh, we gave our address out, you know, to the company, and they came out, and they were late uh, when they got there. And the guy looks around, and he's like, oh, thought this uh, was down in Morgan Park. Uh, we don't have any cable up here, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I still didn't have cable all through all through high school. First time I had cable was when I lived uh, in the dorms at college. Oh, okay, so what is that? Ninety early nineties? Ninety two, ninety three. Okay. Uh... okay. Well, <laughs> interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. So not too many channels. No. Then you know came satellite TV. Uh, the internet in the late nineties, but people really didn't have a lot of that till the two thousands. But you know how much it's changed yeah. since then. I mean, this stupid thing. I'm holding up my stupid iPhone. This yeah. thing has more into it mm-hmm. okay, than anything you could possibly imagine. I mean, I never thought I'd live in a world like this. No, the way we get information is totally different. Um, and when it comes to politics, I'm a big YouTube guy. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of podcasts on there. Um, there's... You know, I listen to Joe Rogan, I listen to Glenn Beck, I listen to, there's my wrestling podcast I listen to, mm-hmm. there's an ESPN one I like, so there's a whole bunch of, I can't watch a YouTube without seeing a Trump or Biden ad. Yes, that's true. I play trivia crack. Mm-hmm. Biden is losing votes by buying too many ads because people are getting sick of them. Really? I think. Oh, yeah? I just think it's, oh my God, this again? What? Well- um, Bloomberg just gave him a whole bunch more money to buy him a bunch more ads. No, well, I don't know. I mean, uh, if he, he must not think he has Minnesota wrapped up because no, he's... It, it ads like every. <laughs> uh, My, I, Trump's I, got a lot on YouTube, though. Wow, yeah, he's got a ton. Yeah. I, I tell you, I saw a couple the other day. I don't know if you saw these. There's one where, like, it shows where Hillary fo- fell down the stairs at once, then like passed out next to a car. And what it is is there's a maga a maga hat flying around and hitting her, and she <laughs> falls, and then and then there, it flies around Joe Biden's head, and he's like looking around the room in his <laughs> basement. Who did that? I don't know. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there was another one about how to recognize a zombie, and that was all about Joe Biden. <laughs> I like the. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I saw a uh, thing. I, maybe I can find it on my pictures here. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Weekend at Bi- you know, Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah. There's Weekend at Biden's with <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with uh, Obama and, oh, and uh, good. Kamala, the Ugandan giant, uh, yes. pulling him around while Biden's sleeping. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's a good one too. So <laughs> it does get creative, but it does it does bring to mind Jay the the there is something there's something about reading a newspaper. I, mm-hmm. I remember. First off, my dad, and I think he still does it. Yeah. He's 73. So he's, he's the one that still has a subscription. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he still Sunday morning, he sits in his underwear at the table and reads the paper. Nothing's changed in 50 years. We used mm-hmm. to do that before church. He'd be downstairs reading the paper, eating breakfast. Yeah. Um, and he still does it. 50 years later, he hasn't done anything different in 50 years. <laughs> but in 20 years, his generation is unfortunately gone right and nobody will ever get a newspaper again i mean i mean anybody yeah. a teenager today has never read a newspaper never will read a newspaper yes. wouldn't know what they were you know for, yeah. for them it's something to start a fire with at, at yes. on a camping trip that's okay? true so i mean we we're transitioning newspapers have been around for a thousand years i mean it's it's Unbelievable how fast we have gone from print media to television and radio mm-hmm. to internet and you know websites, podcasts, yes. blogs, things like that. And the political world, I think, is trying to catch up with that. Mm-hmm. Um, there are still a lot of old-fashioned, uh, uh, I call them paper campaigns yes. because they they. 
take ads out in the paper for thousands of dollars yeah, or they buy a billboard. Yeah, buy a billboard. <laughs> I'm surprised billboards are still around. I, I know. Mean, I, there's a part of me that's really shocked at that because I couldn't tell you I couldn't tell you what's on a if I lived next to a billboard, I don't think I could tell you what was on it. <laughs> I really couldn't. Yeah. I mean they're just they used to mean something when you couldn't get information anywhere else. Right. You know, and now they don't mean anything. And yet people still pay thousands of dollars for them. And, you know, I don't understand it. I really don't. I think it's nuts. But, right. I mean, and then this year, with so much in-person things not available, mm -hmm. fairs canceled and night to unites not happening and blah, blah, blah. It is even more put dependence on technology yeah. to get a message out. And mm -hmm. with Facebook and Twitter becoming the umpires of, of what's naughty and what's yes. not on their forums because they're exempt you yes. know, from, from laws that, that don't allow that. Right. And, and we should just say they're... They are categorized as a platform uh, because they're supposed to be a pass-through for information, and it's the end user uh, that puts that information on the platform and the people who comment on that information that it's supposed to be a free exchange of ideas uh, so that, you know, the company can't get sued. Uh, there's yeah. an exemption from that, from libel laws, because they just let everything go. However, <laughs> we know that's not really true. That, that's not really true. No. I mean, all of this stuff that has, has happened in the last week with the Hunter Biden story and how none of it has seen the light of day, how the New York Post still does not have its Twitter account back up, uh, even though it's been verified. This, this information has been verified by the CEO of Hunter Biden's company, by, um, by the DNI. Uh, who's the head of all the intelligence agencies in in the federal government has said no this is not a russian operative that <laughs> started this this is real um doesn't matter and they even said you know there was the hearing yesterday and jack dorsey was asked well you know what proof do you have that uh that this is disinformation he said i don't know i don't have any but that doesn't change anything. New York Post still doesn't have its account. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Mark Morgan got, uh, who is uh, the the commissioner of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Yes. Got uh, suspended for a day uh, from Twitter for making a comment about how well the walls are working mm -hmm. for immigration. That they've cut yes. back this, and they suspended his account. They locked his account for a day. <laughs> And gave him some ridiculous explanation. Um, I don't even under. I, I would read it, but I, you, you people listening would fall asleep. You channel surf. I mean, you wouldn't even yeah. bother listening. But here is here is uh, you know an official mm -hmm. who works for the Custom and Border Protection, explaining a policy, saying why it's working, explain, you know, doing all of that, and he, is, he got suspended for 24 hours from Twitter for putting that out there. So, yeah. I mean, they are becoming... Now, look, the, 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 we said this a few weeks ago that... Well, we have what's dubbed alternative media. I hate that expression. I do, too. You know... You know, podcasts, blogs, uh, talk radio, to the traditional print media and the big three networks and, and so on and so forth are still much bigger. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in our world, but to the country at large, they're still much bigger. It's not going to be long, though, before online stuff is bigger than anything. Yes. That more and more people, it's, there's a slow shift going on, but it's also fast. I mm -hmm. mean, it's a slow shift, but it's a fast shift. Yeah. I mean, think about how much information, Jay, you get from, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Google, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. What do you see? You see something, today, what do you do? You Google it. Yes. I mean, that's just what we're trained to do. Yahoo. I mean, so many people get that that 
at some point, very, very, I think in the very near future, mm -hmm. most quote unquote news is going to come from that. Yeah. You know, not from Dan Blather, whoever's, whoever's <sighs> doing the nightly. I don't even yeah. know anymore. It doesn't matter. No. Um, you know, people may watch those shows for entertainment. Yeah. Which is also dangerous, in my opinion, because Absolutely. if news is entertainment and it's about ratings, mm -hmm. it's not about news anymore. Um, but, you know, you watch the nightly news. Look, watch the commercials, mm -hmm. okay? And it's all about hemorrhoid cream and, and <laughs> you know, uh, hearing aids. So you can yeah. tell what demographic. They know their <laughs> demographic, okay? You know, yeah. those are the people watching that. People 25 aren't. And the reason I, I, I express this so much is because political campaigns are so behind the times. And in some ways, both sides are. I still think both sides are behind the times. Mm -hmm. um, that the majority of information is not going to come from somebody's lit piece. It's not going to come from an ad in the paper. Uh, it's not going to come from some debate. You know, which we put so much stock into, <laughs> right. even the presidential debates. I mean, we had a debate last week, and the only thing tangible that came out of it was Biden's back and forth on fracking. Yes. I mean, I didn't really, it was like the one talking point that came out of a two-hour debate. <laughs> I mean, so ultimately, information's not going to be gathered there. Right. And so where is it going to be gathered? Who is going to be? Where are? People going to get the majority of what you want to call news. I call it information, yes. not news. Where's that going to come from? And let me tell yeah. you something. Who's going to be the arbiter? I mean, look what happened to a guy like Alex Jones, You're right. who some people think is a nut. Fine, I don't care. There's plenty of nuts out there. Yeah. They're not all banned from, you know, anything. He can't right. get on anything. He got on Joe Rogan, and now they're trying to pull uh, that show off of. Uh, not Joe's site, but yeah. that he can't put it on YouTube or something like that. And so, I mean, uh, again, who's making the decision that these people don't have a First Amendment right anymore? Yeah. It's scary. You know, uh, once you decide that somebody's not able to talk, you can decide anybody's not able to talk. And uh, that's not, you know, what we uh, value in this country. But have we gotten to a point where differing opinions are misinformation now? No. I, well, I think that... You and I disagree on an issue. One gets flagged for misinformation. Mm -hmm. The other opinion doesn't get flagged for misinformation. Right. Yeah, and, and, and that has started to happen, you know, Um Look at the Babylon B. It's a satire site, and yeah. and they get flagged. <laughs> I know. It's Nobody like, can take a joke I anymore. Know. It's like Saturday Night Live getting flagged. I, mean, I, just... I know. <laughs> the Onion. Yeah. <laughs> Can't we have a little laughter? You know. Oh, apparently so, not. When yeah. you know <laughs> Democrats are the target of that laughter. But I mean, here's the thing. I mean, with with. Uh, campaigning now yeah i mean you really have to prioritize that presence on the web i mean that's almost the most important thing now mm -hmm. is that presence there and the money that you know spent doing old-fashioned stuff you know has to be shifted somewhere else and i think i think people have been slow to do that i think there's a danger in that and that's losing the person-to-person -person contact you know yeah. i mean I, I which you know and the sound bites that are out on the internet, and uh, you know, where do you go to get your reputation back if it's yeah. damaged by something? But I mean, you got to have a snappy website, you got to have ads, you've got to yeah. have big colors, you've got to have, I mean, uh, you have to do videos, which we've seen a lot of candidates do now. Um, it's a totally different way. And it is, in the last 20 years, it's changed completely. Yeah. It's turned on its head. Now, and, and, and where do we see it going? I mean, where, do we, where are we going to be 
but we better not be doing this show in 20 years. But let's just say that we why, are. Why not? Well, because, I mean, nobody's... I know you get paid in pesos, but I get top dollar for being here. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to... I don't know if the, you know, I'm, I'm, they're going to come up with the money to keep me. Yeah. I'm still only signed through episode 199, Jay. You know that, don't you? Uh, it's, uh, it's in the mail. You... Oh, FedEx lost that, too? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I mean, 20 years from now, and like we've said before a bunch of times on this show, that 20 years ago, you and I didn't have this medium, this forum. Right. Okay, now we do. Mm -hmm. What's that forum look like in 20, what's the, what's the 2040 plan when it comes to the media? I mean, are we going to even have the nightly news anymore? Are we going to, what's cable TV? Is that just going to be a bunch of sh people shouting like it is now? Um, <laughs> is, uh, well, I think it depends what happens with this election. I think there's a real chance that if Biden wins, if, if the Democrats win the Senate, that we see a fairness doctrine come back in that is going okay. to decimate. I, okay, I want you to explain what that is, because I think people hear that. What does that mean exactly, a fairness doctrine? Well, uh, there's what it's supposed to mean and what it really is. Exactly. Uh, you know, the fairness doctrine was supposed to make sure that all voices got heard, that there was an equal amount of time given to people uh, to differing sides of an issue. Which we but, know is BS. Right. What really happened is... Go just, on CNN and tell yeah. me that's true. Oh, definitely. You know, Um what what it really ended up though is that it hurt conservative talk radio. It it hurt. Uh, they went after the the mediums that were not dominated by the liberal elite. Yes, you know they didn't go after MSNBC. No, it was being applied to mediums like talk radio. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's how about NPR? They don't even the government doesn't even enforce it on itself. No, it doesn't. Well. So what does that mean? What does that mean for podcasts? What does that mean for... Uh, I think it depends on on the company that runs the podcasting host. You know, uh, I think if you have a good host that is just going to let you be, then there won't be an impact. But I think, you know, that if, you, uh, if you're with other podcast hosts there will be an impact because they're not going to put up with certain kinds of talk they're not going to uh you know it, if you're not hitting the intersectionality matrix you're going to get taken down uh if you're you know if you're not hitting the you know uh the talking points of of blm and and other groups you know it, if you're seen as a racist because you're white or whatever yeah I think by whoever's that, definition right it, you know so you're gonna see them find reasons to come after conservative um podcasts and and talk radio again and, and but is talk radio a dying medium i mean is that you know is i don't know i mean that's that still tends to be pretty popular i think i mean a lot of people do catch it on podcasts uh, but they've I, done a I, good job modernizing. They, they, yeah, that. as far as radio goes, I think more people listen to that than they do just about anything else on radio. Uh, sports is probably up there. Yeah, definitely. Um, although with phones, you know, a lot of more people are able to actually watch the games on their phones if they're not home. Uh, but with you still have to subscribe to some things right, though, to do that. Right. Yeah, it's not so simple. So, but I think that. It's really going to depend on, on who owns the, the platform for your information. And they better have a backbone of steel because they're going to come under, uh, you know. FCC, FEC. Yeah, they're going to come under boycotts. Uh, their advertisers are going to come under boycotts. They may start losing advertisers. And, and can they stand when that starts to become the norm? Um, and, and I think there's a real concern there because we have a group on the left that will stop at nothing to tear down something they don't like, whether that's a statue or whether that is a media empire, they don't care. Well, yeah, I mean, how, how many times have we seen voices try to be shut out, mm -hmm. you know, that somebody disagrees with, and they, they, it's not enough to do that. 
the person has to be, uh, you know, shouted down, dressed out, p- protesting outside of their house. Yeah. I mean, things like that. It's It's gotten... You know, it's gotten really scary, to be honest. I mean, you and I are in this field. I mean, we're people that participate in this. And, you know, the idea that us sitting here having a free exchange of of, of uh, ideas, guests, mm-hmm. uh, topics, uh, challenging government most of the time, yeah, uh, which is what you're supposed to do as a citizen. Right, uh, watching our tax dollar uh, that can come under scrutiny or get outright banished uh, from a, a, a free medium. What are the odds that these? companies get reined in. I mean, what is it going to take to rein them in and say, look, you can't, you're not the arbiter of free speech. Right. You know, I mean, do they have to get sued? Um, um, yes. Because you notice but, conservatives don't boycott right. things. I mean, we respect, at least I do, and even mm-hmm. though I, I don't know what I consider myself anymore, um, I'm just kind of out there. <laughs> Maybe more liberty-minded than anything else, and just trying not to keep a label put on myself. Um, but I don't call for boycotts of things I disagree with. Um, I'm mindful of it mm-hmm. sometimes when I do my shopping. Believe me, but yeah. I've, I've cut back on. I don't think I've ordered anything off Amazon for a while. Yeah, <laughs> I may mm-hmm. not. For you yeah. know, even though it is is a, a cool medium, I. You know, it just bothers me. I, I don't I don't tell others not to. I don't do anything like right. that. But I do think twice about it. Um, well, one thing that you and I encourage people to do is start their own blog, start their own podcast right. if they can, uh, and get around the media that you may be shut out from. Because if you think about local media, for the longest time, Jay, it's been the local cable channel. It's been... Uh, the local newspapers, which are dying, and you know, I don't even know if they're read anymore. I don't even know if they're distributed anymore. Yeah, um, it's been uh, those types of places to go to get info. Um, and I think, and also, even if you look at television, television is actually on decline. Yes, because of the high cost of cable and satellites. And the low costs of things like FlixNet yes. and uh, Hulu and <laughs> all this other stuff. I don't know. This uh, It's my wife's domain, that stuff. I just give her the credit card. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. But there's other stuff, too, that this stuff that's $10 a month that people are watching. They're getting around traditional television. Now. Mm-hmm. So even television has decreased, I would argue, uh, in the past dozen years or so. Very yeah. much, very different than it was, say, 15, 20 years ago, where where uh, people are not just watching TV, they're taking their TV and they're watching a uh, you know, subscription to something. Yes. And, and, and so, or they're, they're taking the internet, right, to television. I mean, it, it's yeah. so different than it was. Um, so, even TV is on. TV and radio are on decline a little bit. Yeah, you know, which would be, but like I said, where are we going to be? You said it depends. Let's pretend Trump wins. Okay. And uh, somehow this stuff gets reined in a little bit. What does that do? What does that do to change things? Well, if he gets reelected, um, I don't know because we're still dependent on. Congress. <laughs> um, Congress would have to go out to the social media companies and say, I'm sorry, but you are not a platform, you're a publisher. And in that case, then that would allow them to get sued, and I think that that's part of it. Um, Why doesn't somebody just sue them anyway? I, they can't. They have federal protection because they declared themselves a public. Or a, yeah, but we have the judges now. Right. So let's just activist judge it. I don't think we have activist judges. I think that's exactly what we fought against. Adam. Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, applying the law, damn yes. it. Yes. Now, does that vary? Could a state take action? Could a 
could have. Oh, yeah, I think so. Unfortunately, they're all in California, which probably doesn't give, but they do business everywhere. Right. Does that give legal grounds for a attorney oh, yeah. general to say, hey, look, I don't care what the feds say. You're operating in my state, mm-hmm. and you're deciding what's free speech and what isn't. Yeah, I, I don't see why not. Think Keith Ellison will, will <laughs> take it up anytime soon? No, yeah. <laughs> no. Not not unless uh, you know Facebook somehow falls into the hands of uh, Sean Hannity or something. Oh. I guess. <laughs> or even worse, like Franklin Graham or yeah. something. Oh, yes. oh my goodness, that would be just uh, horrible for them. Yes. So with that in mind, Jay, I mean, in, in uh, how big? You know, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Podcasts are the wave of the future. Yeah. I mean, I think. I think podcasts will only grow. I think they will still grow, yes, yeah. as people kind of peel off from TV and radio. Yeah, and I mean, 10 years ago, I didn't know what a podcast was. Okay, I know they existed very little, okay. but, uh, but now podcasts are very popular. Like you said, they're on the up and up. And... Uh, and, and you know what, what I so enjoy, even though I don't like you know I don't like shows where I only talk like ten percent. Yes, but I love having the guests mm-hmm. on the show because they get a medium here that they don't get anywhere else. No, I mean, what mayor or city council candidate sits down for an hour and talks to anybody? Is there any other medium other than this where that happens? No, you know, I mean. Local cable access, they get 10 minutes maybe here or there. They get a one-minute speech. That's what they get. Yeah. That plays five times. Yeah. That's what they get. Which, again, it's again, it's another... Yeah. You know, and so I, I can't express enough to people wanting to run for office to not be afraid like me and be afraid of technology, and I'm getting gooder. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, but... What you have to do online is almost as important as knocking on doors, maybe even more important. You know, I mean, just, I mean, I don't believe in running a campaign from your phone, but. I think it's a, a tool, it's part of it. It's a big tool, though. Yeah. And there's things that you can't do anymore, like billboards and crap like that. Yeah. Let your opponent spend $3,000 on a billboard. <laughs> right. You know, so, I mean, but, I mean just, I, I've just had a marvel at how fast things have changed in our lifetimes. Like yeah. you said, but let me ask you this, Jay. Where, do you think in, in 10, 15 years we will have newspapers? Hmm. Well, I think the those companies will still exist. I just think it'll be all be online. Right. I yeah. mean But again, the more they go online where everybody else is, the more it yeah. diminishes them as and the more they try to charge people. Right. <laughs> which well, everybody's used to getting everything for free. Right. <laughs> so I mean, you know, I wonder how many people click on a Star Tribune article and then you go, "Oh, you have to pay." Okay, I won't read it then. You know, I mean, uh, quite a few. I know that's what I do. Yes. So, I mean, they're going to have to figure out a way, if they're going to stay in business, they're going to have to figure out a way to make money um, without distributing a newspaper. Yeah. And ultimately, the local papers are going to follow suit. I mean, you're not going to have that as a medium the way we used to. Right. Um, I think it's inevitable that they fall. And they'll never come back. I mean, that's the thing. It'll Absolutely never, ever, not. ever come back. It's gone. It's gone for good. Bury it. Extinct. Kill it. Whatever you want to say. So it it it, and that's why this regulation of the internet is so scary. Because if the internet becomes the only place where you can really get out a message at mm-hmm. some point, and I'm 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 making a broad thing when I say the internet. Because I consider Netflix and stuff like that subscription. You need an internet yep, connection. Yeah, you do. So to me, that's I don't consider that TV. I consider that online. Right. And they run commercials and have ads and all that. We get to a point where 
what you say, you know, there's naughty things you can't say. And it's funny, you can have uh, Netflix shows about killing people and all that kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. you, know, you say, you, you put an ad for that says a certain thing and they won't let you put it on. Interesting. Yes. Uh, but, you know, as they say, let me ask you this Do you think there will be an alternative, I hate to use the word again, opposite? Of Twitter and Facebook that gets yeah. created if it gets too restrictive. Well, I is mean, is there another platform? Yeah. I, here's the problem, though. Um, a lot of people, a lot of conservatives, have gone over to Parley or Parlor. I don't know how it's pronounced, but uh, it's supposed to be like a, a competitor to Twitter. Parlor. And, yes, and a lot of conservatives have gone over there, and and. It seems to be doing okay. Uh, however, it's an echo chamber, you know, and you don't ever engage the other side. And, there, you know, you're only getting what you're already interested in. Um, I think part of Twitter's charm, if you will, is the fact that, you know, both sides do kind of intersect there. And as nasty as some people are. Well, but I mean, our, 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 on Parler, our... our is the left not welcome on there? Or? No, they're welcome. Okay. But they've got Twitter. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it's like. But you're right. There's a danger in not debating. Here's the mm -hmm. thing, too, about the media today. If I don't want to hear the other side, yes. I don't have to anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can just listen to the podcasts I want. Yep. Watch. TV shows that I want. Exactly. I don't have to hear. I don't have to hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's gotten, to, which is also dangerous, though. It is. I think it's dangerous because I'll tell you. I mean, as a person whose views in life have evolved and continue to, mm -hmm. you know, um, I have always said this: I'll work with anybody who hates me. Yeah. If it gets something. That I want accomplished. Right. So if I were on a city council, if I were in the legislature, and I had a goal to get something done, I'd work with the person I hate the most mm -hmm. to get to get in the person who hates me. Mm -hmm. But if we never engage, we never talk, I never hear what they're saying, yeah. um, I never hear their supporters saying, oh my goodness, well, this guy might be open to what I, I had no idea, this blah, 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 blah. Right. Those conversations never happen. So to me, um, the conversation and the disagreement is not, I don't consider that divisive or anything like that. I consider it healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel like I'm the only one that thinks that sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, I, I purposely follow people on Twitter that I don't like. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 as dumb as it sounds, Sometimes I seek it out. Yeah. I do, too. I mean, I I do that so that I can let all of our followers know, you know. Um, by the way, that's uh, C-O-M-M, -M, Solutions <laughs> M-N on Twitter. Uh, come follow us. Follow Open Streets Minnesota. Yeah. See how much they like us. Well, that's the thing. You know, we, we follow all of these crazy accounts, and, and we show you what they say in their own words, because I think that's important. You know, and that's part of, of why Twitter is important, is that they do allow that stuff to be published, and... We get to show it to you, you know, and I think that that's a huge win for, for our side, you know. Um, the the downside is that when we actually speak, you know, they 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 mute us. They are we are, us, are we they, important enough yet where they do that? You know, I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe we'll wear that as a badge of honor if that ever happens. Yeah. We'll wear it as a badge. I, of honor. I will tell you there are things that I have tried to retweet and it hasn't. Or the, yeah, that I've tried to retweet with like a quote, like quote a tweet, and uh, it has not let me do it. Huh? Yeah. So I don't know if if that was forced by Twitter or maybe I was in a bad cell area, but it happened twice. I have found lately I cannot retweet something without commenting. Hmm. Is wow. that is that something? What did I try to retweet the other day? Sure, it was good. Well, for me, it has yeah. to be. 
I don't know. It doesn't. It was either about baseball or from the Iron Sheik. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he wasn't very happy about uh, the uh, yeah uh, World Series, which I was ecstatic about. Right. But when Tampa Bay took out Blake Snell, he went off on a tangent. (laughs) Don't take out the Snell or something like that. (laughs) And then blankety blank, 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 right. blank, you Get know. Jabronis, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like it when he quotes those songs and then yes. says, go blank yourself at the end of it. It's, <laughs> oh, Sheik's great. Just, he's the best to follow. So, I mean, just, just to think about this, though. I mean, to think about being censored or something like that, or um, being the victim of something, you know, I mean, that's another thing, too, that you can't erase off the Internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, again, it, free speech, I mean, we are where we are with that. But I'll tell you what, uh, you people thinking about running for something, boy, I'll tell you what, the, the things on your phone, mm-hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say they are, you talk about it being a tool, I think it's the most important tool. Yeah. Because I, I, I put your website, social media, everything all into one basket in my mm-hmm. book. Uh, obviously, person-to-person contact, I still believe in. I mean, I'm yeah. one of those people who thinks you look somebody in the eye, you ask for their vote, you get their, your credibility, you shake hands. I don't care if you spread yeah. COVID, fine. <laughs> but, I mean, that to me is still the best way. It's also the least time-efficient way. So... You have to do all these other things, but I'll tell you what it, it is. It is weird to see where we've gone, and weird to see. Uh, uh, I think by 2040, you're going to have no newspapers, no nightly news. Cable TV will continue to be the joke that it is. Mm-hmm. Local news hype. You know, I I think that is a dying breed as well, although they have adopted well to the Internet, I think, for the most part. And ultimately, these social media platforms, I mean, they just, they are, uh, I mean, they're taking over sports, they're taking over music, they're taking over everything. And it seems like it only grows. Mm -hmm. And, you know... uh, It's just a, it's just an interesting world we live in, right? Yes, now. yes, indeed. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what to. I, I don't know. I don't know what we could do. What could we do next? What I always think. What can come out new? Now, I mean, what don't what don't we have? Mm. Okay, I can go to a meeting thousands of miles away on the computer. Okay, can access anything. Any anybody at home bopping their banana has got a worldwide audience. I mean. I, <laughs> What can we do that betters that? Well, um, I, I think that it'll go to AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and, and uh, we will have contacts we can put in that will allow us to see things in a different way. And we'll, I don't know, as the singularity happens uh, via uh, Ray Kurzweil there, that uh, the as we become more integrated with our technology that we may not have to have a phone it might all be in a chip in our head or you know oh god not that no. not that i want that <laughs> i i would uh, be resistant for one but uh you know that's about the only place it can go i think from where it's at you know and it, it, like i say you would be able to, to say you know whatever it is hey google show me <laughs> this and you know you would see it in your contact and it yeah it's really a chip in my head well or somewhere I where does know. it show my contact if it's in my head well i just you would have the contact lens in your eye and then it would like pop up on your lens whatever it is they want you to see Ugh. Yeah, I don't know. I wear contacts too. That's freaky. Yeah. yeah, they're not putting a chip inside of me. I can tell. I don't even let my dog get one. Oh no! The only chip I'll have inside of me is Lay's. 
Yeah, or whatever, Pringles. whatever else you're eating. <laughs> Doritos. Or, yeah, you name it, it's in uh, you. <laughs> really? That's that's your that's your, what do your salads hold the vegetables again? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Jay, let me ask yeah. you. Let me just ask you this: Where do you get most of your information? We'll call it. If you want to get information on something? Where do you go? Um, you know, given my age, uh, I am still a little traditional. I don't go to newspapers. I don't even open the free one they throw in my driveway on Saturdays. That goes right in the recycling. Um, <laughs> you want to save trees? Quit printing newspapers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I do watch TV. I do watch the internet, you know. Um, I do go to YouTube. I go to the Blaze. So you go a little bit yeah. of everywhere. Yeah. Okay. You know, I spread it around. Um, well, I, not everywhere. I don't go to CNN or MSNBC. No, I mean but, every medium. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so, you know. And, and I'm kind of kind of in that transition, you know, where I was used to this stuff growing up, but I was young enough that as this stuff came into fruition and has grown, I'm kind of grown with it. So... I think that's okay. I, I I think that it's still, you know, we're trying to figure out what to do, uh, you know, with like we kind of touched on earlier, local elections, where are they going to go? <laughs> you know, you, you get your information from them by looking at the local paper. They'll ask them three questions or whatever. They... Uh, you know, have a candidate forum well, that'll that show up on that the is, internet. That hasn't changed since the beginning of the time. Why yeah. don't they do anything different? Right. So th that's the thing. Where will this go? Because we we live in a day and an age where no one should have to go to the polls and not know the candidates and what they stand for and who they are. But yet, we, locally, we have had to struggle with that forever, and I don't see anyone stepping up to do it differently. Um, I know you and I have batted ideas around about that uh you know obviously these uh places like league of women voters don't want to work with us to make things different <laughs> but um you know it, heck, no they like, want to maintain their monopoly yeah, candidates don't <laughs> want to you know well because i mean we, we pose a threat to them i guess as far as you know bringing but, but new you people into the mix but, but jay like i said if I were a candidate, I'd go to any medium I could. Right. I mean, if, if, if quote, unquote, the opposition, whatever you view as the opposition, invited me to something, I'd yeah. probably go. Yeah. Because, again, the idea you can only go in front of people that you agree with is exactly yeah. what's wrong with a lot of that stuff. Right. I mean, if I'm a, if I'm a liberal and all I do is watch CNN... Nothing's going into my head other than the regurgitation that I hear. Right. You know, so I think it's I think it's good to I don't want to call it a hostile environment. It may be, but yeah. I think it's I think it's I think it makes you a better candidate when you do that. It yeah. makes you, you're gonna look. You become a representative of the people. You're you're gonna get it from all sides, whether you want to hear it or not. Yep. So you might as well just get used to it. Yeah, and you can be respectful. If you be respectful, they probably will be too. You know, you got your occasional nutballs, but I mean, you know, it's it's. I don't know. I just marv. I, I don't know if I'm in awe of all this change, or or part of me still harkens back to the good old days. Uh, you know, when when. It, but then again, the good old days are where people like you and I would be shut out. Yeah. That's so, true. I, I don't know that the good old days are something to to like either. But I think where people get information and stuff and what people are watching, and it's ever changing. I mean, who says that it's it's FlexNet now, but who says it's not something else two years from now? It's YouTube yeah. today, but what if YouTube you know, there's other means like Daily Motion and a few other things? What if another one pops up like that? I mean, yeah. uh it, it is ever changing. So it, it's uh, I, I, am I the one that finds it a little scary? I find it a little scary. Yeah. You know, it's not quite the shining scary, uh. but it's a little scary. Well, I think any time we're facing the unknown, I mean, things are a little bit, you know, and especially because we don't trust the people in power. I think that compounds that. Yeah. 
You know, if you had benevolent leaders that you could trust that weren't going to screw everything up or try to track you and trace you, I, I don't think you have that worry. But Yeah, but how close are we to that? Well, pretty close. <laughs> you know, I th th there are times, and I don't know why, I get the... I mean, the, the amount of cameras and stuff that are everywhere, I mean... Um, and listening devices. It's not like they have a, a little bug like they had in the Dukes of Hazard. I mean, there's, there's sophisticated stuff now. Yeah. And I mean, it is. It. I mean, it. It, it is so. I don't know. It feels like the world's so small. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I guess it is. I don't know. We sit here and we we plan and we plot, and I wonder who's listening in. <laughs> I think somebody somewhere, somebody in the CIA or FBI, it can't be the CIA, they're not supposed to go after American citizens. Right. Do you think the, the J. Edgar Hoover wannabe is listening in on us, planned something? Yeah, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'd probably, I'd probably I'd be, I, like I said, I'd kind of wear that as a badge of honor. It's like, wow, we're important enough to do that? No, I mean, I'm kidding. But. <laughs> But yeah, the you know, not trusting the people in power, and I'll tell you what, I mean, that's something that's a consistent thing on this show uh, from the beginning, and uh, I think it's going to be going forward uh, it, challenging the people in authority, and what we've come to just. I mean, I go back to voting today. Yes, I go back, and I'm like. There's more money on the line, okay, than you can possibly count or picture or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here, and I have to leave ballots blank. I have to write in, you know, Jack Handy or whatever, or, you know, Seymour Butts or Crambone or whatever I wrote in. <laughs> Crambone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't you remember Crambone? No. From Tom and Jerry? No. What is that, the big uh, bulldog? No, that's the guy with the hat and the mustache who, uh... Ah! Uh. Reminds me of the guy who sang the song about Fernando Valenzuela. I used to call him <laughs> Crambone. <laughs> All you saw was a mustache and a hat. Fernando. Yeah. Yes. I'll look it up. I'll look it up here. <laughs> <laughs> but, wow. but, you know, the point being, there's all this money on the line. I mean, billions of dollars being yeah. voted for. It's, it's just... And, and how sad is it that, that uh, you know, I have to leave things blank? I mean, how, okay, I found Crambone. Okay. Oh, I don't remember that guy. Kind of pretty boy gets started. That's oh. Frog and Cohorton, he did ride. Frog and Cohorton, he did ride. See, the thing is, he used to take. Tom and uh, Jerry used to take Tom's whiskers. Yes. Pick them off and use them as guitar strings. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Violins had cat gut strings and he had uh, cat whisker strings. Just think, he's probably culturally insensitive now, don't you think? Yeah. That's Everything's like, culturally insensitive. It's like Speedy Gonzalez now is culturally insensitive. Really? I think so. Did they go after Speedy Gonzalez? I think they have. That makes me sad. Um, yeah, I mean, but anyway, the, so, you know, if they're going to put the, by the way, back to the fairness doctrine, if they're going to put that on talk radio, hey, please put it on CNN, okay, will you? I mean, maybe maybe that's why they hired John Kasich, you know, no. because, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, so, I don't know. I just think it's 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 changing world and... You know, if you're like me, I mean, I, I'm so I'm so behind on it. I feel like I could never catch up to what the latest doohickey or platform or whatever is. Yeah. But you know, I can't stress how important it is. If you want to run for get a blog, do a 
podcast of some kind, do videos, mm-hmm. get your own website. I mean, you got to have those. It's far more important yes. than than taking out an ad next to you know the local uh, local gypsy or something in the local paper. I mean, it's just way more. Way, way better use of your time and your dollars, Jay, as you well know. Yes, absolutely. So, so in review, what are we gonna? What, what's it gonna look like in twenty forty? You never answered, <sighs> didn't I? Don't give me this. It depends stuff. <laughs> um, we gonna have nightly news in twenty forty? Mm, I think that we'll still have news quote unquote uh delivered to us i think that it'll be slanted you know i think that like it's not i I, I don't know that we're gonna have like abc cbs nbc giving us the news instead of us going out um to where it's disseminated more where it's you know um what's the word that i'm looking for i i think that it's going to be a lot tougher when it comes to freedom of speech i think that um we're going to as far as nightly news goes in and of itself um you know it, it, it's going to be run i think a lot more the way that some of our news stations are now whether they actually pop out to that you know on on your mainstream channels and and that's the thing. I don't even know if those will exist. Well, uh, but but as news, if you look at cable news, I mean, yeah. in particular, it's it's just all about who can yell the loudest. It's all about right. ratings, uh, whether news actually gets reported, yes. or anything. You know, journalism is so dying now. If you're yeah. just a journalist who reports things, you're off the air in two weeks. Right. You know, nobody wants to hear you anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, but you see that in all mediums. I see that in the sports medium. I see that on ESPN. Whoever can shout the loudest, whoever can say the stupidest thing, they got their own show with as much uh, play and airtime as they want. Mm-hmm. So, I guess that's where we're headed. I say there's no nightly news, there's no newspapers. If they're around online, if anybody's bothering, Still to do that. I say there's no local news either. I say local cable's gone yeah. because I think cable TV will be obsolete in 20 years. Yeah, I think eventually it has to go to some sort of a cafeteria system. And I, you know, I think Where we're. I can eat whatever I want? Yes. Yep. <laughs> All right, Jay, it's that time again. Okay. Boy. All right. Community Solutions will now present the King of Sting, the Master of Disaster, the Suffering of Succotash, the Nature of Boy, the Roddy of Piper, Stylin' and Profiling, Wheelin' and Dealin', Jet Flyin', Limousine Ridin', with the Sign Off Sermon. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome. Jason Bradley, the third junior. <laughs> the third junior? Oh, boy. <laughs> I could make up my mind. You're both. Okay. <laughs> N- never mind. I'm like uh, the first of and all this, my lineage. Name and this. this will be a message of love. Really? L-O-V-E. No, I just wanted to say that. You're kind of boxing me in. No. It's the music that's inspiring. Yes, that's true. Well, here we are. We have an election coming up in just days. Where forever we are going to decide. Well, it might not be forever. If we decide to go in one direction, we've got a reprieve of four years. If we decide to go in the other direction, everything is going to go down the toilet within the first 100 days. Maybe 250. I don't know. I believe that you're going to have a president that is either taken out or swept aside, and you're going to have a vice president taken over. No, not on Trump's side, but on Biden's side, you bet. I believe that uh, 
This stuff with Hunter might finally catch up with him. After all, Nancy Pelosi said that uh, it was just a matter of time, right? That it was too late to form a commission around the 25th Amendment now. But for future presidents, who do you think she was talking about? Who do you think she was talking about? And she, uh, last time around, she was like, oh, I promise, you know, this will be my last time being speaker, and then I'm going to pass the baton to the next generation. Now she's talking about wanting to be speaker again. You cannot trust these people as far as you can throw them. I mean, really. That's not the way that we see things here in America. But yet we've got a media that pushes that narrative. A media that won't report on anything unless it is good for their side. I mean, how many of you know all about the Hunter Biden stuff? You know? And, and, and there's criticisms on both sides. Absolutely. But there's so many things that our media doesn't report on, things that are important. You know, the, the uh, Transition Integrity Project. The Great Reset. BLM being a Marxist organization. Both of their founders said we're trained Marxists. It's a religious organization because they they chant to, to make connection with the people that have passed on before them. That, it's all out there in newspapers, but nobody reads the newspapers anymore. Instead... We go with what feels good. We said the heck with truth. Who needs truth? We got our emotions. We can, we can go with whatever feels right. Well, let me tell you, that's a dead end street. Because if we just go with what feels right, that's a compass that always goes one way or another, and you never end up at true north. We have to have something that we can moor ourselves to. Something that's not going to move. Something that is always true. But that's not what we want. We want to feel good. We want to walk away from something knowing that, ah, oh, yes, I knew it. I knew it all the time. Things are exactly as bad as I thought. It doesn't matter whether it's right or left. You know, that, but that's the story that gets painted for us. No, we've got to walk one foot in front of the other, and we've got to set our sights on that focal point to the true north, because that is the only way that we're going to be able to do the right thing. Can't go by our feelings. But yet, that's what we want to do. We have been raised in a culture that brings us into a place of putting ourselves first above other people and it really doesn't matter where they come from who they are what they've had to walk in their lives tell about our experience our truth there is no our truth it's the truth it's truthful or it's not truthful there's no our truth our truth I think uh He's a wrestler, isn't he? <laughs> Anyways. No, that's uh, the Paul Pierce, the basketball player. He's the truth. Yes. <laughs> so, we've got to take a stand for truth. Because we are about to lose what we call the fourth estate. The, something that is supposed to be the fourth branch of government to keep government, not in government, but... It, it is supposed to keep government in line. It is supposed to say, hey, you guys up there in Washington, in St. Paul, in a city hall or our school district offices or a county board seats, you know what? You guys are getting mighty full of yourselves and you're starting to do some things that eh, it doesn't jive with me. But you know what? Well, we don't keep track of that anymore. Why? It's too difficult. It's too difficult to keep people's feet to the fire. But that's what we need out of our, our media. 
Yes. You know, we've seen them go after President Trump, but they haven't been fair at all. But you know what? If they were equally hard on him and, and Joe Biden, I'd have a lot less issue with it. If it wasn't slanted, if they, if they were trying to get to the bottom of things, if they were actually talking about the things like Joe Biden getting $10 million from the Chinese government. But they don't talk about it. And social media isn't helping. Twitter, Facebook, Google. No. Google's got things so far suppressed that you're never going to find the stories that you want. And they're going to try and sway your opinion. Have you ever looked down, you know, you watched videos on YouTube and there are as many, you know, for what you believe as there are, you know, they creep some in that are against what you believe and they, they try to sway you in a certain direction. But yet we, we just let them run. The time has come. The age of the citizen journalist is here. But it is up to us to want to report the truth. Because if we decide to fall in line with all the major media outlets, we're just going to be just like them anyways. And what good are we? They've already got that. We've already got MSNBC. We've already got CNN. Why do we need Fernando Valenzuela's, you know running a blog out of his basement that says the same things. We don't need that. We need people that are actually going to go out there and tell a different story, that are going to find out the truth and not let people get away with believing a lie. That's part of keeping things honest. So we know you're out there. There are those of you that want to do something and you're not sure what to do, and maybe you're a good writer. Maybe you're good at internet marketing and you know somebody that can write. We have to be watchdogs over our own cities, counties, school boards, because no one else is going to do it. When these papers go away, you're not going to be able to find almost anything about your local people. So who keeps them in line? Who keeps them honest? It's got to be you. It has to be you. Because you know what? We were put here for a reason. And we got to pursue what that is. Edmund Burke said, All that is needed for evil men to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Let me also say this. And I probably have said this on the show before. When good men do nothing, it is evil. We ran out of music. That's okay. When good men do nothing, it is evil. Don't be evil. Be good. Be great. That's my charge to you. To be great. You can do it. Put your back into it. All right. It's going to be another week. But we're going to come back with either really long faces or uh, feeling pretty good about the next uh, chunk of time. But let me tell you, when once those votes are cast, and we may not even know who's president when we get back here in a week. You know that, Andrew? Possible. We might not know in four podcasts from now who the president is. But, you know, that's another reason why we need media to be exposing what's going on. Uh if you got a question, you want to feed us information, you want to start a podcast or a blog, we'd love to help you get your feet off the ground. You can get a hold of us at commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. That is commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. We're here for you, Minnesota. Because what we started is only the start. we got a whole lot of ground to take. And we need you. It's not a two-man job. We need y'all to come and find us. We love you, Minnesota. And now it's your turn to get to work.
take my 